Now, when Tucker Carlson said that we should be calling the police or child protective services any time a child is wearing a mask because that parent is committing child abuse, something struck me. And no, it wasn't exactly the complete lunacy and insanity of the statement that was clearly just designed to trigger the libs and to get people to rage watch Tucker Carlson. It was that there was a decent chance that Tucker Carlson was asking people to commit an actual crime in the name of this stupid mask related culture war. Sponsored by CuriosityStream and Nebula. Hey, Legal Eagles, it's time to think like a lawyer, because if you do what Tucker Carlson says, well, there's a decent chance you might go to jail. Uh, if you haven't been following along, Tucker Carlson, the ostensible hater of big government and champion of personal freedom, has suddenly found a darn good reason why the big government should interfere with your personal freedom, specifically your right to raise your children the way that you want to. Remember, this is the party of family values. So what is this emergency that justifies swift governmental action? Human trafficking? Terrorism? Well, no, it's actually something much more sinister. It's children wearing cloth masks. So the next time you see someone in a mask on the sidewalk or on the bike path, do not hesitate. Ask politely but firmly, would you please take off your mask? Science shows there is no reason for you to be wearing it. Your mask is making me uncomfortable. Ah oh, yes, the libertarian wants people to stop doing something that doesn't affect other people in any way whatsoever. Masks are for the guilty. They're signifiers of shame and submission. And the guy who ostensibly says that he wants the government to leave him alone included a rant that recommended that his viewers call the cops if they see a child outside wearing a mask. Call the police immediately. Contact Child Protective Services. Keep calling until someone arrives. Yes, apparently parents everywhere are committing mass child abuse, like these people, and these people, and these people. Yes, these people are all monsters committing child abuse and they must be stopped. Because here's the thing, putting aside the legal repercussions of calling the CPS or the police, which we'll get to in just a second, as we've seen time and time again in the news, anytime the police are called for anything, it has the possibility of turning violent, if not lethal. For better or worse, the police are armed and any law, whether it is passing off a fake $20 bill or trying to sell cigarettes without the correct certificate, has the possibility of being enforced at the barrel of a gun. And of course, the real civil libertarians, not Tucker Carlson, have recognized that the preponderance of laws in this country, it may not happen very often, but have the possibility of being enforced by people with guns and things can turn south. Do not call the police unnecessarily. So the point that I think Tucker is trying to make here is that he doesn't agree with mask mandates that require people and children to wear masks outdoors because outdoor transmission is low and the added benefit from wearing a mask is negligible because the transmission of COVID outdoors is just low to begin with. And fine, that's very probably true. But when people are being faced with a global pandemic where now over 500,000 Americans have died, it's probably okay for people to freak out a little bit. And it's a false equivalency to say that even if there were no outdoor transmission whatsoever, that there's no reason for a mask mandate. It's not the same thing to say that the only reason for an outdoor mask mandate might be to prevent outdoor transmission. For example, maybe wearing a mask outdoors makes it more likely that you'll wear one indoors. Maybe it guarantees that you'll have a mask on your person when you decide to walk indoors. Maybe it normalizes the idea of wearing masks in general. After all, these are the same people that made wearing a mask full stop a cultural issue. And of course, when we talk about laws like these, they undergo rational basis review. So as long as there is some rational reason for these laws, that makes the laws constitutional. And there are probably lots of other reasons apart from stopping outdoor transmission. And I think even at this point, Tucker isn't arguing against wearing masks indoors until everyone is vaccinated. And then there is another logical fallacy of false equivalency where Tucker is conflating the idea that even if there's no reason to wear a mask outdoors, that it being actual child abuse to make children wear masks outdoors. That is not the case. We'll talk about that more in just a second. And sure, some of this reads as giving people their own medicine to the extent that he's saying that people who were freaked out about a deadly global pandemic and they understandably wanted other people to wear masks, but the risks were always asymmetric. Not wearing a mask endangered other people in a way that wearing a mask simply doesn't and never did. But look, it's possible that he is simply satirically saying that people should call the cops and child protective services when they see children outdoors 
wearing masks. Honestly, I can't tell at this point. I don't even know if Tucker Carlson himself is satire or not. And I can't tell if his recommendation is satirical, but honestly, it sounds genuine enough to at least talk about whether this recommendation is illegal or not. So either way, let's have some fun with this idiocy. But let's delve into what would happen if one of Tucker Carlson's viewers actually called Child Protective Services or the cops on parenting for putting masks on children. Now, generally speaking in America, parents have the right to decide matters involving their children's health, welfare, and education. Although the state will step in when there is abuse, neglect, or mistreatment, parents have the right to decide what their children listen to, where they go to church, where they go to school, what they wear, and the medical care that they receive. And Tucker Carlson is on board with this, mostly. He believes it is authoritarian for the state to require children to be vaccinated, but not authoritarian for the state to investigate parents whose children appear here in public with masks. Now, Tucker is correct that states are empowered to investigate reports of abuse and neglect. Society is rightfully concerned about children's welfare and federal and state laws require some professionals to actually mandatorily report if they suspect abuse. These are known as mandatory reporters and they include people like doctors, social workers, and teachers. And since we're talking about the substance of these reports, let's address the elephant in the room. No, making your children wear masks is not child abuse, no more so than making your child wear a hat or a sweater. And look, given the number of scratchy wool sweaters that my parents made me wear when I was young, I can understand why people wouldn't want to do it, but it doesn't rise to the level of child abuse. So I feel extremely confident in saying that making your children wear masks outdoors is not child abuse. Parents can force their kids to do a lot of things that have no scientific basis. Making them do things is not child abuse. For example, if a child doesn't want to go trick or treating, a parent could force them to go trick-or-treating and gasp, wear a mask. That's not child abuse. Parents don't need a genuine scientific basis for everything that they make their kids do. Parents can force their kids to wash behind their ears with no scientific basis, whether that's helpful or not. They can force kids to eat carrots, even though there's no scientific basis that it will help their eyesight. And they can tell kids to turn off the dome light in the car, even though that's definitively not illegal, as I proved in my other video. Kids don't like doing lots of things that they're forced to do, often because kids are really dumb. And parents are not committing child abuse just because they're making kids do something that they might not have all of the scientific rationale for. And the same is obviously true for masks as well. If you think that masks appreciably change your oxygen levels uh, or have some other deleterious effects, may I recommend the channel Medlife Crisis run by my friend, Dr. Rohan Francis, or uh, the Dr. Mike channel run by Dr. Mike, who will disabuse you of the notion that wearing a mask could possibly lead to child abuse, but you already knew that. Though on the other hand, scratchy wool sweaters, uh, that's going to have to be the subject for another video. But let's talk about mandatory reporting. In 1974, the US enacted the Child Abuse Prevention and Treatment Act, which requires all states to add provisions to their laws that protect mandatory reporters from legal retaliation for making a report. This legal protection is called immunity, and without immunity, a mandatory reporter could be sued if the report was not substantiated after the investigation. The law recognizes that in some situations, the mandatory reporter might not be sure about whether a child is being abused or neglected. Therefore, in most jurisdictions, mandatory reporters are protected by immunity as long as the report was made in good faith. If that's true, they can't be sued or prosecuted. In at least 15 states in the District of Columbia, the presumption of good faith applies to everyone, not just mandatory reporters. So if Joe Schmo watched Tucker Carlson and got the idea to call CPS because his neighbor's child was outside, oh no, wearing a mask, there would be a presumption that the person acted in good faith. But that's only in 15 states, and that's only a presumption. An aggrieved parent might be able to overcome that presumption. The unfortunate reality is that sometimes people do make false reports of abuse and neglect, and that's why there are laws making it illegal to file false reports of child abuse, mistreatment, or neglect. The logic behind these laws is that any time a false report comes in, it detracts from the time and resources investigators could have to pursue real cases of child abuse and neglect. And at least 29 states in Puerto Rico penalize any person who willfully or intentionally makes a false report of child abuse or neglect. 19 states in the Virgin Islands classify false reporting as a misdemeanor or similar charge. In Florida, Illinois, Tennessee, and Texas, making a false report of abuse or neglect is a felony. And in other states, subsequent offenses are upgraded to felonies. Now, California, Maine, Minnesota, Montana, and Nebraska don't impose criminal penalties for false reports. Instead, they strip legal immunity 
from people who make false claims. This means that individuals could face criminal penalties for filing false police reports, perjuring themselves, or being sued for damages. And that means the Karens and Tuckers of the world who make false CPS reports could face some serious sanctions. So what would qualify as a false report? And is that what Tucker is asking his audience to do? Well, an unfounded or unsubstantiated report is not the same thing as a false report. So would the scenario that Tucker Carlson outlined actually be considered a false report under the law? Well, generally the legal standard for determining whether a report is actually false is knowingly and willfully. This definition comes from Pennsylvania law and is fairly common. This generally means that the person must be acting in bad faith. They must've known or knew it was likely that the report was false. Eric Wemple of the Washington Post contacted child service departments in several states and asked whether the states could invest investigate a Tucker report for abuse and neglect. Minnesota said wearing a mask or not does not rise to the level of abuse or neglect. New Jersey said that the wearing or not wearing of a mask, whether inside or outside is not by itself considered abusive. And Nevada had a forceful statement explaining why this kind of call could do actual damage. Quote, in no circumstance would a child wearing a mask in public to reduce or prevent the spread of disease meet Nevada's definition of abuse or neglect of a child pursuant to NRS 432B. The state's child welfare agencies have limited resources to address real issues of abuse and neglect. And if Nevada does see a surge of nonsense calls, children in threat of actual harm will be in increased danger. And that's just to child protective services. Filing a false police report is an example of speech that is not protected by the first amendment. To prove that a person committed this crime, the prosecutor generally has to show first that the defendant filed a report with an investigative agency, like a police department, a local district attorney, state attorney general, or CPS, and second, that the defendant knew or had reason to believe that the report was false. In some jurisdictions, the prosecutor must also prove that the defendant made the false statement with the intent to interfere with the criminal justice system. In Virginia, for instance, the prosecutor has to show that the caller intended to mislead or interfere with the operation of a law enforcement agency. And on top of that, some states have passed so-called anti-Karen laws to address the raft of spurious 911 calls that have been made. For example, after a New Yorker named Amy Cooper called 911 to report a black man was threatening her because he asked her to leash her dog in Central Park, the meme became a movement to hold people accountable for making false 911 calls. Now, some cities and states are passing laws to stop these Karens from wasting everyone's time. And after the Cooper incident, Virginia was one of the states who added anti-Karen legislation. The Virginia code prohibiting false police reports was amended to make filing a false report a class six felony if the report was motivated by discrimination. Quote, if a person intentionally gives a false report as to the commission of any crime to any law enforcement official, causes another to give a false report to any law enforcement official, or calls or summons any law enforcement official against another person because of his race, religious conviction, gender, disability, gender identity, sexual orientation, color, or national origin, the person is guilty of a class six felony. In addition to new harsher criminal penalties, cities like San Francisco have approved legislation to give people who were targets of a Karen the right to sue the caller. And this of course makes Tucker Carlson the biggest Karen of them all. Call the police immediately. Though in fairness to Tucker Carlson, at least in this particular instance, these calls don't seem to be motivated by discrimination, rather just an incredibly misguided right-wing culture war. And these are just the statutory criminal issues. A criminal issue needs to be brought by the state, the district attorney, usually. Uh, then there's also the possibility that a victim of these reports could just simply sue the person for civil damages related to the actions. And a, a parent could bring a lawsuit for something called intentional infliction of emotional distress against a person who makes a false report. IIED is a tort claim that focuses on intentional conduct resulting in extreme emotional distress, which causes a mental reaction such as anguish grief or fright. To prove a claim for IIED, a plaintiff has to establish four elements. One, that the defendant acted intentionally and recklessly. The defendant's conduct was extreme and outrageous. The defendant's act is the cause of the distress and the plaintiff uh, suffers severe emotional distress as a result of the defendant's conduct. Though in fairness, it can be incredibly difficult to make an IIED claim. Some legal commentators go so far as to call this the civil equivalent of a RICO prosecution because it's just never RICO. But it's difficult for a plaintiff to prove that conduct was so extreme or outrageous that it caused severe anguish resulting in recoverable damages. Though a plaintiff would probably say that this is the equivalent of getting swatted, where there's the real possibility of injury or death, and no one likes having the police called for something as ridiculous as 
wearing a mask. So under some circumstances, someone might be able to make a civil case for IIED related to one of these calls. But if you tried to make a case against someone making a Tucker report, it's not going to be a slam dunk because there's going to be many defenses available. The first of which is that there's a difference between making up a complete lie about something that never factually happened and calling Child Protective Services because of something that did actually happen that you mistakenly believe gives rise to something called child abuse. And so the main defense to any of these charges would be that the person who reported the masks had a good faith belief that they were witnessing something that was concerning. After all, they saw it on TV that if a child is wearing a mask, it must be child abuse. That's the thing about good faith beliefs is that the person might be a complete nutcase, but if they subjectively believe that to be the case, they might be operating in good faith. If they said they feared the child couldn't breathe or was having an asthma attack uh, or had facts to back up their assertion that the child's health was compromised, maybe the report could be legitimate. And it would be incredibly difficult for someone to prove that the person who was making the Tucker report was doing it out of spite or doing it to intentionally harm the parents of the children that were wearing masks. But on the other hand, Tucker's making such a facially ridiculous, objectively unreasonable argument that maybe it's not possible for someone to have an actual good faith subjective belief under these circumstances. Clearly wearing a mask doesn't rise to the level of child abuse. No more than wearing a scarf uh, or a hat or a mask when you're trick-or-treating would be child abuse. And if we're talking about the message that it's sending, uh, are we saying that the entire continent of Asia is committing child abuse when people are wearing masks, even in non-pandemic times? Or that maybe uh, since it doesn't actually harm the people that are wearing masks, they want to send a message. At the end of the day, it's a decision that doesn't harm anyone, including the children, and it's a decision that's up to the parents. I don't know, man. It seems like after this whole pandemic thing, we should be bending over backwards to help parents rather than calling the cops on them. Uh, at the end of the day, I guess even if you did make a Tucker report, uh, you'd have a hard time making out a criminal or civil case, but there's likely to be a small subsection of Tucker watchers that if they follow through with his advice, they might be subject to criminal or civil penalties. And I guess if there's one thing that we can all agree on, it's that you probably should never do what Tucker Carlson tells you to do. Now, I have some other choice words for Tucker Carlson over on the extended version of this video that I posted to Nebula. You know, it's funny that I did an entire video on Tucker Carlson without actually mentioning the Tucker Carlson defense which you can now get with a huge discount when you get it with Curiosity Stream. Because sometimes talking about the insane things that Tucker Carlson does is too hot for YouTube, which is why my creator friends and I teamed up to build our own platform where creators don't need to worry about demonetization or the dreaded algorithm. It's called Nebula and we're thrilled to be partnering with Curiosity Stream. Not only are my Nebula versions ad-free and extended, but they're also released early before the YouTube versions because Nebula is a place where we can experiment with content and put things that we couldn't put on YouTube. And it features lots of of YouTube's top educational-ish creators like MKBHD, Lindsay Ellis, and Polyphonic. And we're thrilled to be partnering with CuriosityStream because they're the go-to source for the best documentaries and long-form educational content on the internet. And now they have an entire section devoted to unsolved mysteries and crime. If you like my videos, you will love the stuff on CuriosityStream. And we worked out a deal where if you sign up for CuriosityStream with the link in the description, you'll also get a Nebula subscription for free. And to be clear, that Nebula subscription is not a trial, it's free for as long as you're a CuriosityStream member. And right now, CuriosityStream is offering 26% off of their annual plans. That's less than $15 for the entire year for both CuriosityStream and Nebula. So if you click the link in the description, you'll get both CuriosityStream and Nebula for 26% off, or you can go to curiositystream.com slash legal eagle. It's a great way to support this channel and educational content directly for under $15 per year. So just click on the link in the description. Plus clicking on that link really helps out this channel. So do you agree with my analysis? Are you gonna be making a Tucker report when you see a child wearing a mask? Leave your objections in the comments and check out this playlist over here with all of my other real law reviews about the legal issues in the news. So just click on this playlist or I'll see you in court.